so it's a short one, um, still related to the period of fasting. But um, before I say my own part, just a few things that I hear that I didn't, I didn't consider earlier, but as the ministries are coming now, I think it's just good to just highlight it as we go on. So it says that as we approach this period of fasting, I didn't think about it. It's not that I took um, for granted this period of fasting and prayer, but it's, I didn't think of go and sit before God. And he says, have some transactions. Make a deal. What does this fasting mean for me? What does it mean for us as a fellowship? Lord, what are you going to do for us? He gave an example of Hannah. She made a deal with God. So, God, let's discuss. These 14 days cannot just pass. It can't just be a regular religious fasting what will you do for us in this fellowship what can we expect from you so sit down and go and have some discussion with God David <clears throat> God says something about David I will build a house for you I will do all this do all that just like God has been saying to us but the Bible says he went back to this house he sat before the Lord and he began to respond. Not after the fasting or during the fasting, but before we even enter. You know, he says you shouldn't take it casually. You should put some premium to it. So let's discuss before we even start. What are you going to do for us? If we offer this, because one of the things that was said again is offer something of value. And what does God look for? What kind of often does God demand from us? It's ourself. It's ourself. That's why he says, don't bring anything that has blemish and interpreted it as maybe something like malice, you know. I will make myself available to you, Lord. But what will you do for us? What can we expect from you in return? I want to, um, I want my life you know, some of the things that God has been saying to us. I want my life that after these 14 days and going forward, to be a true, I will be on a path that increasingly I'm a true reflection of the things you're saying. What can you do for me? I will give this. I will come. I will give my attention. I will give my all. You see, somebody blocked his leave days just for fasting. What can I place before God? He said, Lord, I will do this. This is how we approach it during this period. But what will you do for us? People make deals with God. Amen? It's all about the Bible. People make deals with God. God doesn't say, who are you talking to me? I said, this is what I want you to do. Go and do it. People make deals. So what will you do for me? Abraham said to God, Lord, what will you do for me? I don't have a child. What were they doing? They were discussing, making a deal, transaction. Did Abraham not know that promised land, there was a promise, you understand? He knew. But that is the way he put it. That's the way he said, what will you do for me, Lord? I'll see somebody that God is holding hand and taking him to promised land and he's still asking God, what will you do for me? See, I don't have a child. Now, we're not going to go to God in a very selfish manner. You know, notice what Hannah did. It's true, she needs a son. And we all have things that are bothering us. She needs a son. But see the deal she made with God. Say, if you do this thing for me, I will give him back to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, he's taking it away from, let it not be about me. Eh? You, what do you want? How can my problem, this thing I'm asking to do for me, how can it benefit you? How will it bring glory to you? 
Let's discuss it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay, let's leave it at that. God will keep on granting us help, you know, as, as we move on. So, related to this also, I just quickly want to, just a few minutes, uh, something else to keep in mind, to look out for, um, as we fast and even beyond. First Samuel chapter 10, we're going to read from verse 1 to 7. And I've also given this one a title. It says, it says, when these signs come to you. When you see these signs. Or when these signs come to you. First Samuel chapter 10. And I'll read from verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of oil. So background is that Israel had asked God for a king. We don't want um, God to rule over us anymore. We want to be like other people. Give us somebody we can see, we can touch, we can relate to, we can say, oh, that's our guy. And then he was now in the process of selecting someone for a king. And God had chosen Saul. Okay? And um, God was now, we're now seeing the orchestration, the playing out of the selection. God knew what, who he had selected, what he was going to do. Samuel had been informed. He had discussed it with Samuel. Okay, and said, look, this is, going on. this is what I want you to do. This is the guy. This is how you will know him. This is how things are going to go. So let's read on. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head, that's on Saul, and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? We're going to verse 7, so just keep going. Can you change it to New King James? Let's reduce the dows and the do's. New King James. Okay, verse 2, while he's doing that. When you have departed from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelzah. And they will say to you, the donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? Then you shall go forward from there and come to Tiberit tree of Tabor. There three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you, one carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hand. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the Philistines' garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city, that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place, with stringed instruments, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and be turned into another man. Verse 7. And let it be, when these signs come to you, that you do as occasion demands. Why? Because God is with you. Praise the Lord. So, okay, so that's the uh, background. So, Samuel, as they told Saul, God wants you to be ruler over his people. That's still the same line of thought that. Um, God has been, you know, taking us through about our, um, what I call it, destiny. I'm not sure I like the word destiny, you know, 
about where he's taking us to, where he expects us to be, what we are supposed to be. Kings and priests doing God's business here on earth. Um, though Saul's kingship was not a good model, amen? It wasn't a good model, but there are some things about it also that applies to, whether as long as you want to be a king, it applies to you as well. And God was saying to Samuel, this is the person that is going to lead my people, but to get there and to give some level of confidence, assurance, and direction to Saul, he says some things are going to happen to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So you are going to see some signs, signals, indications. And once you see those things, it's a confirmation that God sword concerning you, as he said to us, he's standing by us to bring his word to pass. God's word concerning you is sure to come to pass. There are signals it's confirming to you that it's time to take a step. This step you are thinking about, this is God. You know, God gives one broad vision, but to get there, there are steps. And those steps, we still need to keep on, you know, following God. Step by step by step until we arrive at that bigger goal. It says there are signals you will see, there are uh, indications you will see that will let you know it's time to take a step. Praise the name of the Lord. And the way it came to me, um, <clears throat> that this, these signals, they will catch our attention. And the example is the example of um, Moses at the burning bush. You know, God wanted to catch his attention. And God had to use something that he knows that Moses will at least turn. It will catch his attention, even if it's for a moment. There are times, you know, in our life, something, something catches your attention. So, Moses saw that bush burning. He has what he's doing. He's busy. He has the sheep. He's tending. But he saw that thing happening. And he said, wow. Let me go and investigate further. I want to understand why this is happening. Amen. There will be signals that will make you to say, what is this thing going on? And what is God saying to me? Well, in the case of Saul, he says, that will be an indication for you that it's time to take a step. It's a confirmation for you. Praise the Lord. The second thing in that verse 7, it says that when you see these signs, do what the situation requires. So, when you see those signals, you don't still go back again and start praying and fasting. And they say, when you see those signals, just go ahead. Amen? When you see those signals, just go. It's time to take a step. Take a step. Move. When you see these signs, it says, do as the occasion. What that situation warrants. Just go ahead and take a step. Amen. If you read that particular verse 7 from the Message Bible, is it possible to show us that um, 1 Samuel 10, 7 from the Message? Message. Okay, let me open it. That verse 7 from Message, Message Bible. Okay, it says, when these confirming signs are accomplished, you will know that what? You are ready. Whatever job you are given to do at that point in time, just go ahead. When these confirming signals, when you start seeing these signals, the eye confirmation that go on. Whatever job you were given to do, that thing that God has been saying, see, it is now time to go ahead and do what? Do it. And then the third thing, it says because God is with you. So this is not a work of, of muscle, it's a work of faith. Praise the Lord. God is with you means that look, trust God. I mean, 
it's easy to say like this now, but you know, when we find ourselves in those situations, like Mr. Benny just shared now, you know, all kinds of thoughts, that's when they start bombarding us, you know. But he's saying to Saul, just, just know that God is with you when you see those things. And just go ahead. Amen. Amen. And for every one of us, I believe that these signals may be different. The way God will signal to you to take a step may be different from me. But one thing that will be common is that you will know. See, it's something that will catch your attention. You cannot miss it. Praise the Lord. What God used to attract Moses' attention, there is no way anybody will see that kind of a thing. And not pause. So, what's the meaning of this? Amen. But for Saul, for Saul, he was given three um, signs. You know, I said for every one of us, it may be God will use different things to signal us as we, as we are moving, as we are going. You know, as we are listening to what God is saying and taking heed to what he's saying and doing what he wants us to do, you will get signals at every point in time. But for Saul, he got three signals. The first one, it says, the donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And so he was, as it were, being told to stop looking for it. Go home. Because now your father is what? Worried. So what they are saying to Saul is that, when you start seeing that what you're doing is no longer relevant, it is not needed anymore. Because he's looking for his father's sheep. The sheep have been found. You don't need to look for it again. When you start seeing that this particular thing you're doing is not needed anymore, stop. It's a signal. Because if you don't stop, you will introduce another problem, worry. Say, if you don't stop and go home, your father will start worrying. Things that we must stop doing because they no longer add value. When you start seeing those things, it's not adding any value. Why are you just doing it? I think that's what people call religion. Why are you just doing it? Why are you, just, why are you doing it? You can see it doesn't add value anymore. You can see it doesn't make any meaning. No sense in it. It will start causing you more problems. It will introduce an additional cost for you. So, your father will start worrying. Say, so, when you see that start happening, no, it's time to do what? Pause. And take the other step that God is telling you. Praise the name of the Lord. Say, so, stop and go home. Your father is getting worried. Number two, signal he got. He says, now let's go to three before two. Two is, even me, I'm a bit, okay, I'm a bit scared, but let's go to the third one. He says, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and you will be turned into another man. So Saul was not a prophet. He has never prophesied. He's not even allowed. He's not among the people. You know, they were saying he's Saul also among the prophets. It's not his territory. Praise the Lord. When you start seeing the demand to do what you are not, you know, things that you are, this is not me naturally. Amen. It's not something I, I used to do before. But it keeps coming to you. It says, when you see that sign, know that it's, God is saying something to you. It's time to make a move. Praise the Lord. The sign of, you know, things presenting, the things that you're not used to, presenting themselves to you. It's said to that, for Saul, it said, the spirit of God will come upon you. That means the enablement, the ability to do that seemingly scary thing. Ah, I've never done this before. What is this one? Why are they always breaking this to me? What is this happening? I've never done it before. Say, the Spirit of God will come upon you. You will be turned into another man. And you are going to do that thing which you were not able to do before. Or which, as it were, you were not meant to do it before. Praise the name of the Lord. When you start seeing 
things presenting themselves that you're not used to. You are required to do it, but it is not you. This is not part of me. This is not how I used to do. This is not something I think I can do. In fact, what it means, don't let there be no cannot. I cannot do. It is impossible. Cancel it. When it starts coming like that, no, you've received another signal. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay? And even to make it more clear about this uh, um, sign, when, when I say that it's something that is not used to, you know that this Saul guy, if we look at his own confession, this Saul was a nobody. Nobody. Amen. First Samuel chapter 9, verse 21. Let's read it. First Samuel 9, 21. First Samuel. 921. Okay, maybe we'll go back. Okay, let's leave it here. Let's leave it here. Saul answered when he was told, <laughs> God is calling you. There's a work that God has for you. There's something God wants to do for you. He says, I'm only a Benjamite from the smallest of Israel's tribe from the most insignificant clan in the tribe uh, at that. Why are you talking to me like this? Praise the Lord. So even by his own assessment, <laughs> I'm nobody. Amen. So even by his own assessment, when he looked at himself, I am nobody, I can't do this thing you are talking about. But Samuel said to him that the Spirit of God will come upon you. Something will happen on the inside and you will be able to do it. Praise the name of the Lord. The third one. The third sign. So, we need to look out for signs. It's not limited to these things. And I said God will give to everyone an indication that confirms to you either what God is saying to you or when it's time to make a move. The third one, it says, and they will greet you, talking about those people that met him at Rachel's uh, um, grave, and they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread. Can we, what verse is that again? Can we read it? Let's read that verse. Uh, what verse is that? Four. Okay, show us four. Okay. That's first Samuel ten four. Ten four. First Samuel chapter ten verse four. Okay. No, verse four. That's three. The next verse, verse four. Oh, it's jumped. Okay. It's like message jumbled them. Uh, can you change, change to New King James or something? Message sometimes jumbles two, three verses together as one. Go to, uh, change it to New King James and let's see 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 4. Okay. Yes. So, and they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread. No, go up one step, go to three. Let's do, do from three. From three, okay. Then you shall go forward and there, and from there, and come to Tabarit's tree of Tabor. There, three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And, go on, next verse. And they will greet you and give you two loaves out of the three they are having, which you shall receive from them, which you shall receive from their hands. Praise the Lord. Now, these men, the Bible said that they were going up to God. What does that mean? Some translation says it means they were going for a sacrifice. They are going for sacrifice. So all these items they were carrying, they are going to give to God or used to sacrifice to God. 
But there was a need that Saul had. How do we know he had a need? First Samuel chapter um, 9 verse 7. So let's go back to 9 7 again. First Samuel 9 7. First Samuel 9 7. One chapter backward, verse 7. Yes. Then Saul said to the servant, that is, at this point they were still looking for the father's donkey. And one of the servants suggested, this waka waka we are doing, let's just find the, um, the prophet, the seer. Once we find that guy, he will tell us exactly what we are looking for. And then Saul said to his servants, but look, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? For the bread in our vessel, what? Is finished. All the provision they had for sustenance, as they took that journey to look for the sheep, they've been going for days. It says, everything is finished. There is no present to bring to the man of God. What do you yourself have? And then the man now checks, checks, there's some small coins remaining. Let's give him this one. We can't go empty handed. Amen. Empty handed. <laughs> we can't go empty handed, even if it's this small one. Let's give him. But the truth was that all they had was spent. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, these men are going up to God to Bethel. What they want to use to give to sacrifice to God, they use it to meet the need of Samuel. When people begin to reach out to you, you know, to address your need. And this one said that I may be careful about this one. At the expense of something else that is important to them. Praise the name of the Lord. That is a sacrifice to God. And they took out of it to meet Saul's need. Samuel says, if that happens to you, that's a sign. Praise the name of the Lord. It's time to move. Next step. Amen. I said it's a short one. You know, so there are going to be signals. God won't just leave us, you know, just walking on shore of what is going on. I know he will be speaking to us. He's been speaking to us. But individually, we will get signals as we journey. Things that will confirm to you that that step, go ahead. He says, God is with you. Just go. Don't waste time. Just go and do it. We must then learn to trust God when we start seeing these things. Because you know, one of the signs that um, um, Saul saw was a sign for him to do what he has never done before. The unexpected. There were people that were called sons of the prophet. I don't know whether they are, whether they are families that do those kind of job. It's not, it's not uh, Benjamin, Benjamites. It's not Saul's lineage. So it will be required of you to do things that you have never done before. He says, don't just look, stand and be looking. Once those signals are coming, God is with you. Amen. Know that God is with you. You can do it. Just go on. Take the step. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we are grateful unto you. We are, we are a people that are privileged. A people that are privileged. First, last week you said to us, that there is a password you're giving to us. Psalm 100. Say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Come with thanks. Come thanking God, regardless of the situation, regardless of the condition. Come giving thanks. Regardless of how you're feeling. Regardless of what the enemy has surrounded us with. Say, come, approach him. The first sacrifice is a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice when something is pitching you, you don't feel like it doesn't even warrant a thanking God. But you come with God with a grateful heart. Father, we give you thanks. This church will come to you with a grateful heart. We will come with thanksgiving. We will enter with thanksgiving. We will come into your courts with praise. As you lead us on, Lord, grant that every one of us, we won't miss these signals. Every one of us, from the child to the oldest, whether it's, 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 it's associated, it is for me or for the fellowship. Lord, that we will not miss these signals. Grant us that sensitivity in the spirit, that alertness that, it is, that is required to be able to pick those signals in the name of Jesus. Just look at the example that Bosanli gave. You know, now we're looking for a place for fellowship. There could be opportunities and there could be signals that God has been giving to us. Or 
will give to us, we must be careful not to miss those opportunities. Those signs that should tell us, look, this is it, go on, just do it. Lord, we are asking that you will grant us such a sensitivity at this time. As we go into the spirit of fasting and prayer, our spirits are opened up. Our channels are opened up to catch those indications, to catch those signals that you are saying to us, that you are giving to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are asking for help. We will not come before you empty. We will not come this period. Thank God. Thank him. We thank him that today, even before we started, he has brought this information, information to us. We will go and sit before you. We we'll transact with you as a fellowship and as individuals and as families. Says, Lord, what will you do for us? How are you going to do these things? How, how will my life become a praise to you? What will you do? Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.